Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Out for Coffee with Mike and Lori. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Crabb. And I'm Lori Schultz. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the show. show. We'll have some caffeinated conversation. And maybe some special guests along the way. Who, Who knows, knows where, where the conversation, conversation will go? go. You're, You're out, out for, for coffee, coffee with, with Mike, Mike and Lori. Lori. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back and joining us out for coffee. Hi. How's everybody doing? <laughs> We're doing just... All right, Mike, high five. Yeah. Uh, High five. Yeah. uh, 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 Oh, you're all skin and bones, Lori. Yeah, destroying my life. (laughs) Destroying my life. Where are we today, Lori? We are in my little dining room here. Why are we here today? We are here because when you think of where can we go for a Halloween episode that just totally encompasses the whole idea of the macabre, you just go to Lori's house. Well, we got a good old Ichabod over here joining us Ichabod today, too. Ichabod with his, uh, the Headless Horseman? Yeah. He doesn't even have a horse. No. He, this guy is just, he's in dire straits. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening with him. No. But uh, we thought, what a lovely setting for a special Halloween episode, because we love Halloween. We and we thought, what better way to celebrate Halloween this time than bringing in a special guest to join us today? And who is our guest today, Mike? We have a returning special guest with us today because she was such a hit and we love spending time with her and chatting with her. So we are welcoming back Tanya Thomas. In person. Hello, in Tanya. In person, I know. Psychic media, Tanya Thank Thomas. you. Media? Yes. Media. Media. Medium. Who has social media. Who does have social media. Yeah. So There's some psychic media. <laughs> How are you, Tanya? I'm good. Good. So we'll for... Just... Those who might not have had the opportunity to see our previous episode, uh, in one of our earlier episodes, we were able to have a nice Zoom conversation uh, of uh, with Tanya to talk about her experiences of what it is to be a medium, psychic medium. And uh, we learned some really interesting things about how you came to understand your abilities mm-hmm. and, um, and then share those with the world. So we thought, what a great person to have back for, for an episode such as this. For Halloween. For Halloween. This is Halloween. Sorry, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you love Halloween as well too, Tanya? I do love Halloween. What's your favorite part about Halloween? <sighs> My favorite part of Halloween? Mm. The feeling of Halloween. Oh, just the whole energy of I like the energy of Halloween. Mm-hmm. 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 So, uh, are you? Do you have plans to like? Do you? What? How do you spend a typical Halloween? What do you do? <sighs> Typically, so we normally set up our entire lobby. Yeah. We've got about eight thousand dollars worth of gowls and ghouls and witches, and we set up the entire lobby and do a haunted lobby in the apartment building. Oh, that sounds amazing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, get all the kids to come through. Nice. Do a lot of photo ops. Um, yeah. So are you like a do you like like horror movies? Do you like to stay in and enjoy um, that kind of side of it all? Uh, sometimes not so much. It's hard to say. No. Yep. Yep. I'm gonna take a quick aside and say hello, Meaty. Yes. You, Meatloaf is here. He's also special guesting today. Yes. Clip clop, clip clop, clip clop. There's the horseman. There he is. Hey, come on, catch him. Put a little tiny saddle on him. It'll be great. No, um, the doors are open, and anything that's going to go by outside, I just realized. Anything that goes by outside, we're going to know about it. So uh, we may need to close the door. And we'll see. We'll cross that bridge. It is a delightful atmosphere, though, because it's raining. Like, you wouldn't believe outside. Mm-hmm. So it, it's very much adding to the spookiness of it is. our... I love this weather. It's great. Love it. Great. Normally, there's mm-hmm. a giant sunset that comes in this window, so Mother Nature it's was not playing like ball today. It's you know? hitting us right now. Screw that sunset. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, with the uh, excitement of the spookiness and everything uh, happening right now, maybe we could share like some spooky stories and, and maybe some encounters that we've experienced because I have got my fair share of spooky encounters. I know Lori has had some experiences as well, so maybe we can start with sharing a few stories, including, I think you got a little guest here in this house, Lori. I have guests here. Yeah. Maybe I'm the guest here. 
Oh, touche. Yeah. Could be. Could be. When I first moved into this house back in 2016, I had Tanya come and do a saging of the house. So what is a saging? Tanya, Tanya, can you tell us what a saging is? So a saging is, it's a clearing, so it's bringing out, it's pulling out lower based energy and bringing in higher based energy, basically. Okay. You can do it in a few different ways. We did the sage here that day, didn't we? Yeah, we went room to room. Yeah. And then Tanya told me the history of every room. Yeah. Oh, this is good. (laughs) Because I will never forget the room that I have chosen to be my bedroom. There are two bedrooms upstairs. One was the master bedroom before I moved in, but I chose the other one that was the kids' room to be my bedroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, you probably don't remember what you said to me back then, but... I probably don't. No. (laughs) Um... Tanya said to me, so do you ever wake up in the middle of the night? And I said, yeah, every night I wake up maybe two, three, four times a night. She said, yeah, that's because there's, that's when someone's staring at you. <laughs> like, oh, okay. It's great. fun messing with her. It's great. <laughs> what can I say? Yes. But um, no, I, I continue to wake up every night. So I don't, I'm not sure if there's someone still staring at me or if I just really have to pee. Probably both. Or both. Combo. It's your wake-up call to say, did you go pee? So yeah. you don't have an accident. Some little old lady tapping me in the shoulder. Just like, did you go tinkle, dear? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're about to. Uh, side note, if you're ever having a dream that you have to pee, don't. and you're looking for a toilet, oh. it's a trap. It's a trap. Don't do it. No. You wake <laughs> up. Recipe so for true. disaster. <laughs> you wake up. It's so If true. you can. I was in the seventh grade, and I peed the bed because I had a dream that I needed to pee, and I was looking so hard for a bathroom in that dream. Yeah? Yeah. And then I woke up, and I was like, well, this didn't work out as planned. But well, lesson learned, I guess. Lesson learned. Don't pull those traps in the world. And I was about... That's my gift to you. Yeah, <laughs> my Halloween gift to you, society. <laughs> Cheers. Now, I've never really experienced anything particular. Like, I never got, like, a weird vibe here or anything like that before. No. But... but. There was one time I was sitting over on your sofa over, sofa over there talking with you, and out of the corner of my eye, over here in this door, I saw a man here. standing there. And as I looked over, it's like he tucked away. And it didn't scare me, but it did catch me off guard. And it, it, it spooked me a bit, but it wasn't like I need to get out of your spook. It was a, mm, what was that? Was it cute? Oh, super handsome. Was he? Tall, dark, and handsome. Yeah. <laughs> See the one staring at me in my sleep? <laughs> you wish. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then the only other time, and I, we might have shared this before, so I'm going to apologize in advance if we've heard, shared this with our guests before, but uh, one time Lori was locked out of her garage. Yes. So this is right when I first kind of started getting to know Lori, and she wrote on her Facebook that she was locked out of her garage and she didn't know how to get in. She needed a hand. And I said, ah, I can lend you a hand. So I came over here, and your garage had a, a door and it had like one of those like eye hook on uh, keeping the door locked and we're looking mm-hmm. at it and i'm like well if you get like a knife like a butter knife we can probably knock it up and get in there so you went and you got a knife and, and we got in there but when we went into your garage the windows were locked the garage door was locked like from the, the big, inside the big garage with, door with like the hunk on the inside i believe and then the door would be the only way somebody could get in or out of that garage. Mm-hmm. And it was locked with an eye hook, which obviously can only be locked from the inside. Mm-hmm. We even put it up and like slam the door to see if we can get it to fall back in. And it was like, impossible. You could not manipulate that to happen again. That was very odd. So you got some my life. energy following you around, I think. It's my maybe. life. Yeah. I'm used to it. Yeah. Right? I haven't heard that story before. You haven't? No, that's oh. new to me. We'll but this is my life, right? We're going to have to sage garage. Yeah? Did you, you didn't do the garage? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Just the house. Just the house. Uh, so going back to the saging. So you do a saging when somebody, is it typically when somebody moves into a new place? Or is it like maybe somebody's lived there for a while and they've experienced bad energy through it? Like, it can there's, be. There's no yeah. like wrong, yeah. right or wrong time to do a saging? Not really. No. There's a lot of people that will do it weekly. And what is it yeah. about the sage that like... What, why sage? The sage itself has magical properties, so okay. it actually kind of lifts up the energy of the space. So it, it it kind of pushes out the energy that would be, I call it lower base. I don't like to call it bad energy or negative because it's not. Right. But lower energy, energies that might be a little bit heavy. Right. You can get those in your house so yourself. So if you've got people that are living with you, a teenagers. <laughs> right. Uh, teenagers in a bad mood. Okay. The energy's going to go boom. Emily, the floor. are you listening? Are you listening, Emily? <laughs> 
So it's really good to have that kind of stuff in the house just to kind of bring it back up. It just dispels it out. It just removes it. You can also use bells. Bells are great. I love using bells for that, Like too. dingly bells? The sound like of a bells? bell. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> dingly bells. Like no, the sound children. of a bell. <laughs> Remember the old ones that your grandmother or somebody used to have sitting in the kitchen or in the, in the dining room? You know, the ones that you just... Yeah. Like, Every time a bell rings, a teacher gets the teacher. A teacher gets the teacher. gets his wings. A teacher. <laughs> She's changing. She's changing this for my wings. I can tell you. I that. lost my hood. Okay. We're going hoodless. We're hoodless. That's hoodless. Fine. Yes. Great. Um, so, so is there anything else you can do to help clear an energy of a house aside from saging? You can do the bell, like I said, oh, right. and that you that's really really good, especially if somebody doesn't like the smell of sage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you can also use heavy smell too. Like it's probably it can be very overpowering. While, right? Yeah, it can be very overpowering. I, I like to use the um, sage with the um, I've been using it with the patchouli. And I've been oh. using it with the tobacco, but some people can't kind of tolerate that too much. So right. the bell is perfect Okay. to go in there and kind of do that, to shake the bell up into the corners. Okay. And the whole basis behind the bell mm -hmm. is, you, that's why, you know how church bells ring? Yeah. And it, people always think it's because people, they're calling me to church. Right. Actually, it clears out energy. So it, re, it brings positive energy into the space. Interesting. Yep. I've never heard that. Yep. Yeah. Huh. So, so you can... Bell a home. You can bell it. You can sage a home. Yes, you can. Those are your options. Those are your you options. You can run around. You can burn it to the ground, like she said. <laughs> I would suggest out. not doing that. <laughs> um, or you can do like what they did in Poltergeist, and the house just disappears Yeah, entirely. let's not do that either. Um, <laughs> you can actually get your best mom voice on and just, you know, clear it that way, too, because oh. I've, I've been known to do that quite often myself. Just boss them out of here. Oh, boss them out. Let's go. We're done. Or just make, out like, a go. really, like, out the door. bad cup of coffee and invite them in. They'll be like, mm -hmm. We could do that, too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We could go into the whole, I put crosses in the corners of the windows, but I don't want people, you know. What? Is that a thing? Calling the cops on us or, you know. Crosses you know in what? the corners of the windows? I I'm will pretty use sure. little crosses. Okay. I'm pretty sure the windows. neighbors think I'm already the, the, uh. I'm not on the corner <laughs> anyway, right? Yeah. You'll notice that I have my, my pumpkins on the step. I did. I'm waiting. Yeah, that's why I knew it was your house. <laughs> and then when we get into June, I'll know it's your house because yeah. they're melting on the step. Oh, yeah. That they do. Mm -hmm. That's when the pumpkin patch will be growing all that's over right. the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've had some energy around here. You've, uh, like, have you seen anything yourself? <laughs> um, as for actually physically seeing it with my eyes. Right. As opposed to seeing it with my ears. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you can hear most of that. I've heard things. Okay. in here i could be sitting in the living room watching tv and i will hear dishes clinking into the sink i have a pass through i can see into the kitchen right there's nothing in the kitchen but i'm hearing dishes moving around or sometimes i'll just hear like a like a one just that's a weird right just knock. a single knock yeah and like i don't care for that let's be um, great be thankful it's not three knocks no what does that mean because that would be even worse I, what does that mean that would be even worse <laughs> Now, whatever's here is going to be screwing with me tonight. You want to see worse? Where? Superstition we'll states that if you hear three knocks, don't open the door because death is at the door. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was just the guy from, uh, no. from Union Amazon. Gas. Amazon. Cable guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, death is at the door? Mm-hmm. He's three here knocks. about the reaping. Three knocks. Yep. Remember that from The Meaning of Life, Monty Python? What? Uh, they were at the in the cottage out in the, the English countryside, and right. the Grim Reaper's at the door, and oh, yeah. Death is like, Death, uh, the Grim Reaper. Uh, there's a there's a Reaper at the door. <laughs> the Grim Reaper. He's hearing about the reaping. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how I remember just odd, obscure. The things most from, important stuff ever is yeah, what that's sticks the, right up there. That's the most important part of that movie. I mean, like, <laughs> Hear about the reaping. So, do you get uh, hired for doing cleansing? Is that what you? Sorry, is that what we call it when you come in and sage your house? Is that Clearings, like a cleansing or a... cleansing? Some people call them blessings. Okay. Yeah. And is that is that something you get hired often? Yeah, for? I do get quite a few. So you do readings, which yeah. we talked all about on on our last episode. Yeah. Uh, and then you do clearings. Yeah. Is it what other services do you offer? Do you <laughs> offer any other services? Oh dear. Um. So. If we kind of connect into the clearings, one of the things that I do a lot is with small children. Okay. And kids have a tendency to really connect into the spirit side. So they're very often getting up at three, four, or five in the morning, toddling off into their parents' room. Right. So I will very often go over just to kind of clear the energy of the space so that the children aren't being woken up, you know, mm -hmm. 40 times a night. Right. And wandering in. 
that's where the crosses come into play. That's okay. my, yeah. Um, so I'll do things like that. I will go in and do blessings on brand new properties that are going in. I actually did a property here in London. They were removing a property. Okay. And none of the workmen would go in. Oh. So they were taking it down. I won't say where it was. But Why wouldn't they go in? It was in London because they said it was haunted and they were scared to go in. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to talk to my husband there. Hmm. It's okay. He's That's over okay. there. Yeah. Hey. Uh, remember that? Um, <laughs> it was a huge, huge, huge home. Had been there for a hundred years or more easily. Yeah. And I got an email from the builder, the person that was actually building it. And the email stated, could you please come in here and clear out what's ever, whatever's here. The workers won't come in. They're scared to come in. Wow. They keep saying there's people following them. They're moving their tools. Well, and you mentioned in our last episode too that when it comes to stuff like uh, like renovations and construction, it's yeah. it's disrupting the energy Very much. and what what um, Very much. so it's like stirring things up. Yes, right? it does. Yeah. So yeah. that might add yeah. up to why they're yeah. feeling exactly. a little uneasy. Yeah. So I went in and he wanted it. I mean, he wanted that done before they they demolished it because they were putting up a condom, condominium right beforehand, mm. okay. like afterwards. And so I went in and we did the whole clearing. I'm kind of walking around giggling to myself because, I mean, really, it was just this mischievous woman that used to own the home. Right. And she was ticked. Because they're all messing with their she stuff. She was ticked. She wasn't happy. So we, we spent probably a good hour and a half in there. Yeah. And I'm walking around talking away to her, having the best time ever, you know, and she's trying to tell me where she's buried. <laughs> it was funny. Oh. Um, was it on the property? It might have been across the street. Oh. <laughs> you know what? Mm -hmm. When I go... There are so many people who are in for the haunting of a lifetime. You don't even know. Oh, please don't bother me, because I'll just, I'll just sage you right out of my world. I love you, but no, 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 no. I know what to do with you. Yeah, she can handle you. Nobody yeah. knows what to do with me. I'm gonna get the witch I hear balls that all the time. and say, "Just come in here." And I'm trapped in like a snow globe forever. Where's Lori's? Right there. Help me. So, in your journeys and and. Uh, in helping people uh, through your services, have you ever experienced something that left you shaken or really unsettled that you're comfortable with sharing? In terms of going into someone else's house? Yeah. Okay, there was two episodes. One one was kind of stupid, so I'll tell you that one first. Okay. Because that was my own, my own self that did that. Right. I went in to do a clearing. This was years ago, um, way before I got really good at doing this and didn't get freaked out. And... Um, was down in the basement of the house. The basement of the house was very, 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 really low ceilings. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, mm -hmm. All musty, all wet. Uh-huh. Not something you could live in. And I'm down there, and I'm walking around in there, and I got into this very dark room. There was a heater type of thing over here to the left of me. I am picking up on energies as I go, but nothing that was concerning. Okay. And I'm standing in the middle of the room. The lights are off. I'm feeling all brave, and all of a sudden, something leapt up in between my feet. It came right up in between my feet. I screamed, uh -huh. scared the homeowner half out of their minds, and then came to realize afterwards that it was a sump pump hose. <laughs> and the sump pump had gone on, and of course, the hose lifted, right. and I thought I was being possessed, so that was fun. The other one that I did that really did kind of freak me out just a little bit because I thought, okay, now we're playing with fire, literally playing with fire. Okay. So um, I was carrying loose sage in an oyster shell. Okay. Why you an put them shell? in oyster shells because you can burn it in there. Okay. And the oyster shell, it doesn't actually kind of burn through. So like, it's the almost like an ashtray. Kind yeah, of like kind of like an there. ashtray. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking around the home. And I've got the sage lit, so it's just got a little bit of smoke coming off of it. And I walked into the room where the person, uh, where someone had passed. And as I walked into the room, all of a sudden it just went up. I mean, the flames just shot up. Oh, okay. And I immediately almost dropped it. And I thought, don't burn the house down. Right, yeah. that's all you need. And it did, it kind of unnerved me for a second, because I thought, you actually just set that to flame? Are you kidding me? Right, yeah. You know? Um, so I, there was me standing there going, <laughs> trying to blow it out <laughs> and not blow sage all over everybody's all living over room. Place, you know, yeah. all over the living room, the bedroom. Yeah. And um, I literally got this sense come over me that this person was not messing with me. I'm not messing with you. You're not supposed to be here. And I very clearly heard at that point, I said I didn't want you here. Okay. So I really had to pull it up by the bootstraps. 
You know what I mean? And, and not run down the stairs because it scares us too sometimes, right? It's like, I, oh my God. Yeah. Well, and if what's you, going on? Yeah. And so is this like, um, they're challenging you oh, because you're challenge. challenging them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So it's a bit yeah. of a standoff. It's a bit of a standoff. But then you have to kind of step back and remember, demons aren't real. Demons are not going to come and attack you. They're just not going to do that. They, they're, they're not permitted to get close to you okay. or what people call demons. Right. Right? But, you know, sometimes an 85-year-old little Italian lady that used to live in that house right. who might be five foot two, she can be like a little demon. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? Yeah. Especially when she doesn't want me there. They can be downright... Yeah, not happening. You're not you know going to be feels. here. They'll kick you. The, you, mm. you. You know what I mean? Like right. just You're like in, in life, space, right? Like I'm in her space. Yeah. So when she flamed it up, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me right now? You want me to burn your house down? Seriously?" Mm. And there's people downstairs, and I know they can hear me, and I'm yapping away to this <laughs> this woman. And I'm like, "Okay, you need to can that right now. We're not doing that." So. And she did it again. I'm just going to have to excuse myself for a second. You guys continue on. We're going to go. Because Meaty wants this to pee. has to go out to have a whiz, so. Okay, it's, it's okay. time to see here. Just a little quick break for me. I'll return, and I'll bring back the sage thing so you can see it. Yeah, that'd be cool okay. to see. All right. The oyster shell? Yeah. Yes, please. So when you communicate uh, with the spirits, you, and so you're you're upstairs, you're by yourself, you're, you're you, the, everyone else is downstairs. Yeah. You're verbally speaking out oh, loud yeah. and yep. having a, a full conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yep. And uh, how long, I guess it depends on the house and the energy, but like, is there, is, is it quick to, to sage a house or is it like? I usually say about 45 minutes to get through it really, really, really well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That one was a little bit different that day. Right. It took me a little bit longer because she wasn't impressed. Right. <laughs> It was a bit of a struggle. And it wasn't a case of trying to remove her from her home. That was her home. Right. That that was her home. Yeah. It wasn't a case of that. It was a case of trying to get her to work with the people that were in the home. Right. You know, if you, kind of open this up is your space. It, yeah. This is where her heaven exists. Right. That's her heaven. Right. She, she built that place. Right. Right? Yeah. So you have to get them to understand that they have to work together. But she didn't understand them knocking down walls and... Right. They get confused on the spirit side. They're well, used to things being where they're supposed to be. So it's almost like, you know, you go out for the night, you go out and you get drunk and you come home and everybody moves your furniture and you go lay on the couch <laughs> and hit the floor, right? So for them, it's the same thing. Right. It's a similar type of a thing. So it's a frustration thing. Very cool. Yeah. So what do we have oh, here? We have that lovely sage stick. That's white sage, huh? That's what you brought. That's what I brought. Oh, so, I left it here. You did. <laughs> so our uh, listening only no, audience, what I'm shell. looking here is uh, a decent sized oyster shell. And it, do you mind if I see the sage? Oh, that this one. Fella? Yeah, go ahead. And then, so what I got here, it's like a bundle of sticks mm -hmm. and it's wrapped in, like, this is all just sage leaves. That's all just sage leaves. That's it looks like, like leather. It's all white sage. Yeah. And um, it's like tied up with some string. Yeah. Is it significance between red and white? Or is it just what you had on hand? The white sage is always the best sage. No, sorry, the strings. Oh, I don't know. Whatever it was <laughs> that died that, I haven't got a clue why they use red. <laughs> I don't know. It was what was in your sweater. And, you just it. <laughs> so, and then the end of it, yeah, is, is burnt. And so uh, I'll give that back to you there. That was, and I think, a stick that was um, probably tied by a witch. Oh, look, it's got some cat hair on it. Excuse me. <laughs> nice. Somebody yeah. actually did bring me some back from the U.S. when they were traveling. Okay. Mm. And it had actually been tied by... It, it was a coven that tied them. So that could have something to do with the red eye much. Interesting. Sure. Cool. And yeah. so then you would light that. Do you have to, can you just use a Bic lighter? Is there oh, yeah. like a special? No, you can use okay. a Bic lighter. Yeah. And then you just. just rub some sticks together, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Come on, we'll do this yeah. uh, hopefully do by tomorrow. With your mind. <laughs> you always want to though, um, and I mean, when I was talking about that house where I was blowing out the flames and it's really bad to blow on flames. You should never do that. Right. Um, a, because it actually blows away the energy of the flame. You don't want to do that. So don't never blow a candle out. You need oh, a candle yes. snuffer. Okay. Yeah. Is that what I've been doing wrong for uh, 44 years? Have you been years? doing that for 44 years? Oh, my God. You need a snuffer or a lid or something. Actually, I can't have flame. Yeah, put a lid on it, Lori. I have stupid pets. Oh, that's right. You have pets that look like cause fires. So. These candles are like the, the flicker candles. Yeah, those are battery-operated candles. These, are, these are props. You can snuff it by turning the lights switch right. on the bottom. Um, and then, uh, so if I was to, if you were to sage, you would light that, you, you 
blow it out and it just continues to smoke for a while or it will smoke yeah yeah okay. you might need to relight it a couple of times just to keep the smoke kind of moving Getting it out. and then you're just going to wave it up into the corners around the windows around the doorways okay yeah and yep. is there a method behind like you, you got to do certain patterns or anything like that with it to not like necessarily i just usually do certain directions so okay. I normally start at the back and move out to the front, so. And uh, I'm really interested in this. And We're going to have to come and do, stage your place. Do you have to do like a, like, a, like a prayer when you do it or like anything like that? Like... I do a little mantra in my, in my head okay. as I go. All right. Yeah, as long as I'm saying it, as long as I'm putting it out there, I don't need the family's involvement in that. It's right. not necessary to do that. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. I want to see a little bit closer. So you just... Going He's in dying to job. light this, you know. I'm not gonna light. It. I'm not gonna light it. It's show and but tell. <laughs> Lori, I've seen this in Lori's uh, sunroom for quite some time, so I'm glad that we actually were. You able just to thought have... it was an old corn dog. I just... <laughs> She's coming back to that, it. That's a She's really old this. corn dog. Oh my god. Okay. She forgot that. Yeah. Oh man. Well, that's very cool. I'm yeah. I'm I'm curious about all that, so uh, I, I'm glad you're able to share a little. We'll have to do that with you one day. Well, yeah, we will. And you can so, wander around behind me. So I uh, live in an apartment building. That's okay. So and do I. My apartment, the land that it was built on, is where the Ontario, the ORC was, which is what the Ontario Regional Hospital is mm -hmm. that what it's called, or the center here. Mm -hmm. um, it's back in the day, and uh, I have okay. some fond high school memories. Okay. Of because uh, there used to be we're on the like the west side of the highway, and there was. I think they called them cottages and they were these big they looked like haunted houses mm -hmm. and i think there was four of them a b c and d and um we used to go in there all the time mm -hmm. in high school yeah because it looked like a spooky abandoned insane asylum with the paint all like peeling off the walls all the yeah. walls are curved there's no corners um and it was always really spooky and uh i always loved doing it and it just it left me feeling really creepy and then we move in and i'm in this new apartment for a while i'm like wait a minute <laughs> This is right where we were, you know, back in high school, all those years ago. It's kind of the same area, right? So very unsettled spirit. I bet I know where that area is too, because my daughter actually bought a house there, and I told her to move. Oh well, that is because they didn't do a clearing before they built them. But I'm not talking about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mentioning where. Okay. Well, Mike already did mention where. Okay, so it's kind of a good idea for anybody that who's listening, who's local. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Uh, maybe we'll help the housing prices come down a little bit. <laughs> and it wasn't me that actually picked up on that. It was my granddaughter. It was Ainsley who picked up on that. And I think she was all like three years old. Yeah. She started to lose her mind. And my daughter, of course, you know, who likes to kind of sometimes kind of poo-poo that. Well, she doesn't poo-poo. She's very, very, very intuitive. But she likes to kind of go, okay, mom. Do you know what I mean? She actually, she's messaging me on Facebook going, you need to come over here. Something's wrong. What was happening? What was she noticing? Um, there was people walking into her bedroom, and it was a brand new home. So she was actually waking up in the middle of the night, and there was women that were standing at her door, staring at her. Oh, that's yeah, nice and creepy. Yeah, it mm. was creepy for her. It really scared her, and it wasn't really anything that was negative or or anything that was going to harm her. It was just a discontent in the area, and I won't get into the details as to why, but I think we all know why it might, that may have been. Right. Um, and so when I went over there to kind of, cause when she first built it and I remember walking the front door going, something feels off here right. for a brand new home. Something's off. Mm. And I couldn't quite peg what it was. that was really bothering me. Right now I had worked at regional mental health in St. Thomas. So I was kind of used to different energies, that similar type of a feeling. Right. Um, and I thought, no, just stop it. You're just overthinking this. Stop it. And then when Ainsley started. And it was really bad. She was. She started to have really bad night terrors. She was screaming. She was scared. Yeah. And there was really nothing to be fearful of. But I went in there and I did a couple of clearings. I left the child with rain sticks to shake and bells to, you know, everything. Nothing was working. Okay. And then I went home and I did some research. I researched the land. Yeah. And when I researched it, I was like, are you kidding me right now? Mm -hmm. Lots of things happening. Are Had you happened. serious? Oh, yeah. I mean, we all know that, right? Yeah. Lots of disgruntled energy, I'm yes. sure, in that area. Displaced energy. Right. Sad mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. Lost energy. Not really, you know what I mean? Not not angry, but lost. Right. And, yeah, and I, I messaged my daughter, and I went, um, have you seen the history here? Like, I can't run around and do a rain dance in the middle of the entire subdivision. I want to. <laughs> 
but I'm sure that they would arrest so me if I did. So how she charge for that? A neighborhood ring dance? Well, I don't know. <laughs> if everybody wants to join me, we'll see. We could um, do it for free. So I've never, like, in my in my apartment, I've uh, never really experienced any, you know, any uh, heavy energy or anything like that before. Yes. Um, but there was uh, a couple, t- I've, I've, believe I've seen things okay. and some of these are like what I've said before it's like I kind of wake up and I'm like half in half out of it yeah which is normal but um I had seen something in our bedroom uh when I had woken up that I haven't seen before because I've seen animals and I've seen people right and stuff like this and the only thing I can do to explain uh this one evening was uh kind of close to the foot of the bed on my side it looked like um you know like when the sun hits a spider web and it shimmers yep it was yeah. like a yeah. little like star made out of that. And it was just floating there. And I thought it was like, I had like blurry, sleepy eye. <laughs> and uh, I noticed it and it was just floating right there. And then it started to come up to the side of the bed and then it disappeared. And I went, That's really okay. cool. That's it didn't cool. scare me. That is really cool. But it was just kind of like, okay. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so I rolled over and then I just went to bed. And then probably like two hours later, I, I woke up and as I woke up, it came out of the bathroom and then towards the bedroom door. And then same thing, it like went That's and disappeared through the door. Mm-hmm. And that one freaked me out. The mm-hmm. first one didn't, the second one was like, that was spooky. And I've never again ever seen it, but it was twice in that one night. Yeah, you probably saw an angel. I'm gonna disappear through that door for one more second because- She's leaving again. You know what? He's he's just really disrupted tonight. <laughs> he's, he's all stirred up. He's I like, you know why? <laughs> There's, I'm sure there's a lot more than just us here at this probably. point. Probably. Well, not probably. what the neighbors have to say about no. walking around the neighborhood. <laughs> but the first time, actually, he didn't need to pee. The first time he was banging on the closet door because I forgot to feed him supper. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> that was oh, that one's on me. Oh. I'll wear that one. But I think now he's got to go eliminate some Yeah, you go take care of him. All right, I will be right back. You guys chit chat. So it's interesting <laughs> you say the angel thing, too. Yes. Yeah. Because fast forward a, a few days... And I, uh, I had found out, I had got news that that day, uh, sorry, it's very kind of weird to talk about, but that earlier that day that, like, I had seen this that night, um, but I found out that earlier that day, uh, my old drama teacher passed away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so on its own, it was kind of like, oh, and then I learned yeah. of, uh, her name was uh, Miss Green. And I heard Miss Green had passed away, which really made me sad because her and I was a co-op student with her yeah. and stuff. Like I got to work with her quite a bit, and um, and uh, and so I just it kind of hit my heart a bit. And then I was like, wait a minute, that's kind of really weird that I saw that that same night. And that uh-huh. was kind of where my brain went. I was like, was she coming to say hi? And uh, so that was interesting. And it's really intriguing that that would have been a star shape too. Yeah, because right? I've never For seen a drama that before. teacher. Yeah, right. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was an experience I had in our building. And the only other time that uh, I've noticed something or like feel like I've seen something <laughs> was we got like stainless steel uh, elevators. Okay. And I was waiting with my dog to go in and the door opened and I could see kind of on the one wall as I was going in, um, in the stainless steel, it looked like somebody had like stepped off to the side. Like there was a person in yeah. there like, oh, somebody's getting on. Yeah. And they stepped off just the way like the, the shadow in mm. the in the stainless steel looked and as i went on there wasn't anybody on there mm-hmm. and that really spooked me out because i i well they take elevators on. too okay <laughs> just kind of right up and <laughs> down on, all day. it's easier right <laughs> and then uh and now I, I just thought of another one too and this is more recently like over the past couple weeks uh we go down to our like the ground level or like it's kind of like the basement level okay where we take our yeah. dog out the back door yep. uh to to use the bathroom and stuff like that and there's this one hallway that we don't really use all that often because it's like the storage lockers are down there. And then there's like an emergency exit that like nobody lives down. Sorry. What is happening? <laughs> what is he doing to you? He's tangled in my cape. Oh no. You know what? Yeah, me love I'm so sorry. Keep talking. No, I'm like... so sorry. He's being such a little okay. what head the, tonight. He's stirring the pot. <laughs> he's gone. Go ahead. Oh. So, um, <laughs> but I'd be coming to bring the dog into the elevator to come upstairs and she's fighting me like, we need to go down this hallway. So I, I'm like, okay, this is weird. So I'll take her for a little walk. And she has to go down and stand and stare at the emergency exit that nobody uses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, of course. So I was like, maybe it's like the wind coming in. And it's like catching her ear or something. I can't, and I can't get uh-huh, it. Uh-huh. Um, but almost consistently over the past like three weeks, she like has to go down and see what's going mm-hmm. on down there. Mm-hmm. And that's uh-huh. left me a little shaken too. Uh-huh. I actually have that on video. Dogs are incredibly I, intuitive. Yeah? Yeah. 
Some of them are stupid. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's meaty. All caught in a cave. All, All right. right. So, do you... Uh, First, we, we take ha- a little break? We're going to take a little break because we uh, have some things we want to try out. We're going to do a little experiment and yeah. uh, see how that goes. But uh, for now, we're going to take a little break. Right, high five. Uh, yeah. yeah, there yeah, you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Not really. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Not that sorry. Never be sorry. All right. Well, we'll be back a little uh, a little later with some more Out for Coffee. With Mike and Lori. <laughs> see you soon, guys. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our special Halloween episode of Out for Coffee. With Mike and Lori. And our special guest today, Tanya Thomas. Let's give her a hand. Oh, okay. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not. And we're taking this away from you. <laughs> I'm not even sorry. You're done. We thought today it would be a really fun thing to do if Tanya maybe helped us understand how to do, what would you call this? Is this dousing? It's dowsing. I like to call it, you know, having fun in the living room with dead people. Having fun in the living room with dead people. <laughs> cool. Sounds like a typical Friday at Lori's house. There you go. <laughs> that sounds good to me. So we have with us some trusty... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. lost an eye there. there Could have a very different episode, but it's all good. <laughs> we have our trusty wire coat hangers. Um, not a lot of people have these anymore. No, I will say my mom has quite a few. Uh-huh. We've got a bit of a funny story here. My mom has quite a few because my grandmother used to work at a dry cleaner. Oh. Ah. So if you're looking for coat hangers, the crab residence is the place to be. Did your grandma steal them from the... I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. Maybe. Klepto- but um, So I had one job today, and that was to bring coat hangers with me. <laughs> Guess what I didn't do? Guess who came to our rescue? <laughs> Tanya brought us coat Code hangers because she has hundreds. You almost think she was psychic or something. She just knew Mike wasn't going to follow through. There we go. We just appeared with them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So explain to us what's going to happen here. Before we get started, I just want to kind of share with everybody out there that I'm having dental work done. So if I sound like I'm day drinking, I'm not. I apologize. Um, I just what? really need to say that because it's bothering me. <laughs> Okay. okay. You wouldn't be the You're first person drinking. I mean, to be drinking on the show. Well, so. we could be day drinking, night drinking, whatever. So that's pure whiskey in Mike's cup. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> the purpose of the coat hanger, it's it's simple. It's something that's really easy to get. It's easy to find. You can you can go to Value Village and you know maybe just kind of you know yeah. take one out with a a shirt that you bought. Yeah. They do like to keep them, but you can kind of go, can I keep this? Can I just keep this one? Right, and take it home with you. Or you can buy them at the dry cleaners. I'll sell them to you. All right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing with the coat hanger that's really a lot of fun, and my grandkids do this all the time. They have the best time with this. Yeah. They really do. So mm-hmm. coat hangers are really, really good for picking up energy in the room or giving you yes-no answers. Is it Very because much it's metal? like a pendulum because it's metal, right? Okay. So it will actually kind of pull into the energy that's around you. So if you're sitting at home... All by yourself, because this will freak you out. Yes. <laughs> Sitting at home all by yourself, and you're feeling like there's a presence or a sense that there's something in the room with you. Okay. You can't just pick up your coat hanger. Okay? Okay. And you can actually have a little bit of fun with this. So the number one thing with these is when you're doing it is please do not hold it tight. Both hands. Okay. Keep your thumbs off that coat hanger, Mike. Off to the sides. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All so right. it needs to be able to swing nice and loosely. I see Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And the first thing that we always, always, always do is I always like to tell the energies that it has to keep the coat hanger straight. The coat hanger must come into the middle. It needs to be straight. Do not move it. I'm trying, but it keeps going to the side, towards you. You need to get controlling. Okay. All right. Right to the center. Tell them to straighten it up. Straighten it up. Bring it to the center. Does it matter that my hook's up and yours are down? Doesn't matter. Okay. Makes no difference at all. All right. And then what you want to do is you want to ask, first of all, if you're going to use this as a pendulum or if you're going to ask, stop it. If you're going to get it to work with you in terms of asking about, you know, things that are coming up. Will I get a date next week? That kind of stuff. Right. Will I roller skate? That kind of thing. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Okay. (laughs) Um, What you can do is, first of all, you will ask the energy to show you what a yes looks like. So you just allow the coat hanger to move in the direction of what yes would be for you. Okay. Mine's okay. going over so to right the now, left Show here. me yes, please. Okay. Show me yes. Ooh. 
it's going to the right. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Okay. Got it. Got it. And then you yep. wanted to ask to bring back it back to the into center, the center. Please. Back to the center. Back to the center, please. You'll all notice that nobody's hands are moving. Nope. That nope. is awesome. Back to center. Mine's oh. Oh. And then you're going to ask it to show you the no or show the me negative no. response. Show me the no. Show me no, please. Okay. Your no comes straight ahead. It's like, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, mine's a little bit. Oh, there we oh, go. I feel okay. like I need to adjust my hands, though, so I'm going to screw all this up. All right. You were thinking this. I am. Just it's like, I, I can't. Relax. It's weird to hold it without a thumb. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, put your thumbs on your fingers. And then. Just what? <laughs> it's very easy. I just let it slide in the middle like that. <laughs> okay. It slid. Right. So you can have okay. the thumb right there against your, oh, your, the palm of your hand, oh, I'm kind of but okay. you just have to let it slide through. Okay, back to the center, please. Okay, and then I'm going to bring it back. Oh, I'm freaking out. Sure. I'm freaking out. Okay. Thank and you. then what you can also do with this, so we can help you to answer specific questions. One of the things I always remind people to do, um, so. whether you're using this or whether you're using the pendulum, and we'll pick up the pendulum in a minute and do that one, in a minute and do that one. But okay. one of the things I always tell people to do is when you ask something a question, close your eyes. Do not focus your energy on the actual object in front of you. And as you're asking the question, I want you to put out there, I wonder what the answer is. Hmm. I wonder what the answer is. That takes your ego out of this, okay? Okay. So if your question is, am I going to get a raise next week of $40 a month? Right. Right? Yeah. Naturally, your desire is to get that raise. You want that raise. Right, subconsciously. I really so consciously, you can't actually create that effect. So am I going to get that raise of $40 a week next week or a month, whatever it happens to be, and I wonder what the answer is. I wonder what the answer is. And then you open your eyes and you look at the direction it's gone. Okay. Okay? So you have to take your ego out of it. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Okay. You can also use this for finding energy in the house. No. <laughs> it's fine. I don't want to know where it is. It is. It's a lot of fun. Okay. So if you're sitting there and you've got a sense that there's somebody in the room around you, all you simply have to say is if there's an energy that's present in the room, would you please point out the direction that you are in? Whoa. <laughs> okay. Right there. <laughs> oh, even mine's starting to go that way. Uh-oh. Look. Look. Look at that. It's oh, all dear. going that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. Isn't that fun? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, mine's still going. Oh, here. What is happening? Who is it? It's Who probably is? your father. Could be my dad. I'm not connecting tonight. No. I'm off the clock. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. It would It'll be, be him. your dad. It'll, It'll be your be dad him. behind me because her dad really loves to take the Mickey out of this kind of stuff, doesn't he? Yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah. Um, you and your ooga booga witchy my stuff. My ooga booga witchy stuff, as that's, he calls it. That's what he calls it. Um, it okay, back to the center, please. Oh, look at that. Okay. Whoa. Go back to the center. Wow. This is really freaky. I am not moving any of this. No, no, no. It does really move by itself. I have to remember to breathe. I keep holding my breath. Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes, sometimes it, it creates a little bit of a fear with people. It's like, oh my God, it's actually moving on its own. Right. Do you know what I mean? So it does, people tend to tense up and freak out just a bit. Right. Right? I shouldn't freak out. But it's like always this. like just relax and just allow for what's happening here. You know? Just go right back over there. Father, I gotta put it down. Okay. Well, that's you guys where I saw that man. Maybe I saw your dad over there. That's exactly where I saw. Maybe that. it was Lawrence from upstairs in the closet. Oh, not Larry. We can't call. Not him Larry. Can't call him Larry. It has no, to be Lawrence. The guy upstairs was Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't surprise me with your dad though, because that's the green, the green room. front, the green front porch. Yes. So this is really good for yes no answers and for finding energy. And for finding energy. So if you're in a home and you're doing like a, a, a paranormal investigation that they like to call them that kind of stuff, right. you know. People running around with, you know, flashlights here, freaking people out. Right. Um, you can go into places like that and you can actually carry one of these around and it will actually direct you into the spaces that you need to be going into. Then get your trusty camera out when you get the direction of where the energy is. Yeah. Once it happens, yeah. we've moved over here. Yeah. Okay. Once it happens, then you can say, please, is it okay if I take your photograph? Okay. And snap a photo of that spot that it went to. Okay, and what okay. will we see? You should see something that comes up on the photo, an anomaly, something will move, you'll have the orb that comes up. Right. Um, probably nothing as wonderful as the star that you saw. It'd be great, though. Right. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But always ask for permission to take a picture. Don't ever just take a picture. Okay. They don't like that. People, too. I learned that with Joanna Donnelly, actually. Don't ever, ever do it without Who's permission. Joanna Donnelly, for those who, uh, Joanna Donnelly who don't know the story? The mother of the Donnellys in Lucan. And yeah, what happened 
and I learned the hard way not to do that. What happened? Well, first and foremost, that's when I ended up in a merge. Well, Wait. we need to hear this then. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I thought I told this story before. Not on our, no. I don't think no, you shared didn't. this one. Did I not? Not to us, no. no. Okay. We need to know this. I had gone out with two nurses that I used to work with. I was nursing at the time. I was working at the regional um, mental health. Right. And we had gone out in the evening. That morning I had woken up around 6 o'clock in the morning. I was sitting in the kitchen. I was having my cup of coffee. Everything was quiet. And all of a sudden I heard a big voice come up from behind me in the kitchen and said, it's time to get your affairs into order. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? Okay. That's my immediate, to say yeah, that. my okay. immediate thought was, really? Yeah. Are you joking right now? Seriously. Yeah, make the hairs on the back of my neck stick up a bit. I was annoyed. What affairs? I'm just do you sitting need here having a coffee. I'm having a coffee, and you're telling me to get my affairs into order. Like, cool, thanks, thanks for that. You know, you're gonna die today. <laughs> Thank you. That's Lovely. great. <laughs> That's and a forecast. It was weird. Yeah. Okay. And um, the day progressed, and all day I kept having this uneasy feeling. I could not shake it this uneasy feeling and I was like seriously yeah. like why would you say that to me right I was annoyed anyway six o'clock that night my uh, girlfriends picked me up they were nurses as well both of them RNs I believe if I remember correctly and we went out we were going out to the um, Roman line In we Lincoln, went, the yeah. Roman line where yeah. the Donnelly farm was. where the Donnelly farm was we were off to the Roman line it was November it was November the 7th to be I'll never forget it okay and out we go and of course they brought along the resident you know as they called me spooky person the witch mm -hmm. who really wasn't doing this professionally at that point i wasn't i was the gift was there but i really wasn't doing anything serious i was nursing mm -hmm. and they brought me along to take pictures because they thought you know if she's with us we'll definitely get photographs right yep no that didn't go so well okay so we get out to the roman line we stop we're not at the farm. We can't find the farm. We can't find it. We're looking everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we stop the vehicle. We get out. I'm walking along the road. Got my camera. And back then it was my camera. It wasn't a phone. Right. <laughs> and they're walking ahead of me. And there's me walking along behind going, come on, Joanna, just show yourself. Give me something here, would you? Come on. Yeah. You know, being very disrespectful. I was being incredibly disrespectful. And my camera just died. I mean, it just died on me. It was gone. That was it. And I was like, fine, whatever. So they come back. We all pile back into the car. And off we go. We're driving along. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the two girls in the front are chatting. I'm in the back. We're all chatting. And then somebody said, so what really happened? Does anybody really know what happened that night? Right. And all of a sudden, there was this voice. And this voice was talking, and it was sharing the story of the Donnelly massacre right. from that perspective. And I'm sitting in the middle of the back seat. They're in the front. It's a two-door car. Okay. Okay? I'm sitting here. They're up here. And as I'm listening to this voice, I'm going, that is a really cool story. And then all of a sudden, I realized the voice was me. Oh. And I was mm. telling the story. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's unsettling. The, the one girl in the front seat, in the passenger seat, was turned around looking at me going, oh my God, that's so cool. And the minute that I realized it was me telling the story, I suddenly felt like I dropped about 40 stories. Oh. I literally felt like I oh. went right to the bottom of the car. I passed out. I went unconscious. When I came back to, the two girls in the front were trying to, like, are you okay? Are you okay? I couldn't get my breath. Snapping the air out of it. Um, had the first of probably the worst panic attacks. And I'd never had one in my life before. Right. Huh. The, the worst. They called it a panic attack in the hospital. Yeah. What was it? I, I think Joanna was ticked off at me, actually, at that point, to right. be honest with you. She so coming in and bossing her around or not. And she thought, okay, you want, you want the story? I'm going to give you the story. Here you go. And um, I remember clearly it was a horrible feeling. My chest was hurting. I thought I was having a heart attack. And I'm yelling at the girls in the front, you have to stop the car, get me out, get me out. I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I couldn't get out. Yeah. And they pulled over, by this time it was dark. It's November, okay, so it's now about 20 to 7. It's about 20 to 7, quarter to 7. So it's darker, it's dark. Right. And I'm screaming, let me out, let me out. They're trying to calm me down. This is very out of character for me. I was normally in control. Right. 
and they stopped the car. They pulled up right up on the side of the road, stopped the car. I'll never forget Marion. She throws the door open. She reaches in. She pushes the front seat forward yeah. and reaches in to help me come out. And I get out of the vehicle, and I, I fell to my knees immediately. I couldn't seem to stand up. Fell to my knees immediately. I'm literally in the ditch, and all of a sudden I heard Marion go, oh, my God. And as she said that, I glanced up and looked, and we were we were right in front of the Donnelly Homestead, exactly where they stopped. Wow. <laughs> right there. <sighs> right there. And that actually was the um, evening that triggered all of this. So I'd always had the ability to do this, but I wouldn't have ah. been to do this for a living. Right. No, no, no. So thanks, Joanna. <laughs> thanks, Joanna, kind of, right? I ended up going back there probably about a year later. Yeah. And the fellow that lives there, and I can't remember his name, the fellow that lives there allowed me to go onto the property. Robert Saltz. That's it. Robert Saltz, yeah. He allowed me to go onto the property, and I said to him, I just need to sit where the house burned. I need to sit there. I have to sit there. Right. So I went and sat cross-legged in the middle of it all, and I apologized. I did. Mm -hmm. I brought them through, and I apologized profusely for my behavior, and I said that was very disrespectful. I should never have done that. And... Yeah, and the rest is history. Wow. And here we are. And it sounds like a completely crazy story had it not been the fact that it can be co I can never say that. Say Cooperated. Thank you. Cooperated, especially with <laughs> my mouth not working, right? Um, but it was so funny when I went into the emergency room because I'm screaming at them, take me to the hospital. I'm having a heart attack. Yeah. They rushed me into UH, the two girls, and they parked up the car. I jumped out of the car. I started running. Yeah. Stopped halfway and went where's my purse and ran back to the car in the middle of a heart attack. Yeah. Which was illogical. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. And I remember going into the emergency room and I ran right into triage, which again is not like me. I don't do that. Right. right. I'll wait my turn and screamed. I'm having a heart attack. I wish I wasn't. Right. And the doctor came in and said to me, can you tell me what was happening tonight? And I'm looking at him going, no, nope. <laughs> uh -uh. nope. I don't think I should. <laughs> You'll be sending me to a different floor at this point. I'll be going somewhere else. <laughs> um, and that nursing career basically ended that day, to be honest with you. It literally ended at that point. Oh. Wow. Yeah. And I got flipped over into doing this for a living instead. Wow. That's yeah. wild. That's a really great story. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was interesting. Huh. <laughs> it was weird. Well, I'm creeped out. So, Ness, so, what, what's your what's your stance on Ouija boards? Uh, and how is this different? How is this different? Yes. Mo you, well, yeah, typically you don't have a group of teenagers doing this. <laughs> no, I just mean, in, in theory. Right. Let's call this a TikTok challenge, it. then they're all going to be doing yes. it. They'll all be doing this. You know they'll all be doing this, right? But if we're this, asking right? whoever. Like, do I have to say whomever. bye and stuff before? No. Okay. No, no. And I mean, you really don't have to do that with Ouija boards either. Oh. Right? I thought Ouija that was like... boards are just, it actually, it, it literally kind of started out as a game. I mean, they used to sell them when consumers distributing. Right. They still I'm sure do it. Toys Walmart. Like, you can go it, and right? yeah. eight uh, up. <laughs> so it's not really the board itself. The actual board is really kind of cool to have. That I've got one of the old ones. I've got one of the really antique ones. Yeah. Um, you keep it at your house. It you? is at my house. Yeah. Um, but... The thing about the Ouija board isn't the Ouija board itself. It's the intent behind it. So okay. very often people see Ouija board and they immediately think, I'm going to conjure up. Helter Skelter, what's his name? What's the guy? Charles, Charles Manson. Manson? I'm going to call he dead? up Charles. Yes, he's dead. Oh. I'm going to call up Charles Manson. I, I think he's been that. dead for a lot of decades, actually. No, 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 no you haven't been dead that. for a lot of decades. It's just... No, I'm serious. I'm not kidding. Oh, that you mean man like has that? No soul. I see right. what you mean. Um, <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, kids will get out Ouija boards and we're going to conjure up Charles Manson. Let's get Charles Manson. Let's get right. Ted Bundy because you love Ted Bundy. Yeah. Right? Well, well, I you don't, should let's, love him. <laughs> let's but you know what I, I don't mean. love Ted Bundy, but <laughs> you the know, story's uh, interesting. Ah, the story's. <laughs> So it's the intent oh, yeah. behind the board that causes the issues. Okay. It's the intention that goes into it. So when I moved into, or we, we owned a house for a couple of years, and when I was moving out of the house, we were clearing out this room under the stairs and uh, that I've been in uh, dozens of times before right. in our years of living there. And this one particular time I was clearing off the shelves, which I have cleared off before. Um, but when we were packing up, uh, I felt, I thought it was a clipboard. And I pulled it down, and there was a Ouija board yeah. Yeah. in our house this whole time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it really 
it kind of, it, it, this is freaky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So no, thank can, you. like, an energy tie itself to the board? And, like, if somebody did have negative intentions of using that, like... Energy can tie itself to anything. So if some... If somebody... I'm not going to sleep tonight in this house, you know. <laughs> Dear God. So did I have anything to worry about by finding that in the house, or... You didn't know it was there. No. So because you didn't know it was there, you couldn't actually push any energy towards it that okay. would create a problem. So the thing with the Ouija boards is people that, you know, they're conjuring up Ted Bundy, they're conjuring yeah. up Charles Manson, do you know what I mean? And it creates a fear aspect. And the minute that you create a fear aspect, that's when the problem starts. Okay. So it's it's not necessarily what it really is. It's the intention you put towards it. It's the intention it. that you put into it. That you're then, it right? Yeah, okay. Very much like the, the Salem witch trials. When, you know, oh my goodness, you know, my neighbor, she's a witch. She's a witch. All of a sudden, the entire down, darn town believes witches everywhere, my right? neighbor yeah. is a witch, even though the poor thing, all she probably did was go and put a little salve on somebody's arm. Right. But it's it, it's perpetrated by fear. So a lot okay. of what I call hauntings yeah. are created by the humans. Okay. They're not cre- It's not created by the spirit side. Huh. It's created by the humans. I get that. It's kind of like what a poltergeist is, right? It's the energy of the person. It's the energy. Yeah, okay. yeah. And we can physically, so from the physical perspective, because we are energy as well, uh-huh. we can push that out. We can create that same environment. So mm-hmm. so many people will, I'll get emails or I don't get phone calls because I don't put my phone number out there. Otherwise, I'd never get any rest. <laughs> right. um, Fair. But I'll get emails or messages, you know, my house, oh my God, this is happening. And I'm like, are you, like, can we just calm down here just a little right. bit here? And let's discuss about, you know, what you're actually putting into this or what's going on in your house right now. Yeah. From the human side of things. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> no, not you. Not okay, looking, good. Don't you look know. at me. It's really hard not to because of the crow. Well, it's you know the what I, mean? <laughs> I want to catch it and put it in a cage. So, coat hangers. One way to try to tap into your, uh, your spirit energy. What else you got? I've got Lori's pendulum here. All right. What do we do with the pendulum? Mm-hmm. The pendulum very similar type of an idea. So you always make sure that you hold it loosely here. Okay. I very often will just do this. I'll put it between my first two fingers here like this. Okay. If you're going out to purchase a pendulum, I always tell people go in. And as you said, it spoke to you. Or it was drawn to you. <laughs> Pendulums, when they are really, 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 truly connecting into you, they're going to pull into your heart space. So always hold a pendulum here and see if it draws towards your heart. And you will actually be able to see the chain go straight. It's not going to work on me. It's not my pendulum. Okay. Okay? It is her pendulum. Right. So if I was to go and purchase one for myself, I would pick them all up one by one. And the one that would actually come in and literally make a direction like this, literally pull towards my heart space. I didn't do that. I just... I know. No, I didn't. I know. But we'll do that next time. I will do that next time. (laughs) What if I have somebody else's pendulum? (laughs) That's possible. You don't have somebody else's pendulum. It will do the same thing for you, but you need to have the one that really is connecting into your to, into your heart, um, your okay. heart chakra. Um, so you will actually notice that it will actually go on a thirty to a forty five degree angle as it pulls towards. Okay. That's really cool. Okay. All right. So I always say that, and you can feel it happening. And I've got people; they'll go into stores with me, and I'm like, just pick up a pendulum and see what happens. And they're there, and they're like, nah, that one's not working. And then they'll get one, and it literally goes. They're like, oh my god, and it scares them. It's, right. it's crazy. Right? But the pendulum, very, very similar type of an idea. It's a yes, no type of a thing. Again, you know, the yes can be. Let's try it out. Show me a yes. Oh, we're going to do circles for yes? So we're going to do a circle for a yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to let it go crazy in the interest of time here. So straighten up again, stop. And then. And then show me a no. And we're going to go back and forth for the no. Okay. So again, you can use this in terms of, you know, is there an energy that's in the room? Is there an energy that's in the room right now? And would it be Lori's dad that's in the room right now? That's pretty definite. That. There's, There's nice your yes. circle. Are you, oh, look at that. That's a big wow. circle. I'm <laughs> probably going to get hit in the face with this. <laughs> so for those uh, who can't see right now, um, I'm watching Tanya's hands and they're not moving. No. Like I'm kind of lining her thumb and fingers up with the lines of the door frame. Yeah. And they're not moving. They're not moving. And that's, the pendulum is, is swinging, swinging around, around. Like, the, like a merry-go-round. Yeah, it's going crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, we could stop now. And now, now it's stopping. 
just out. that's really and you always cool. have to maintain maintain control of that so when you want it to stop you tell it to stop okay um you can also use this again of course to pull into energies that might be in the space you can use it for the yes no answer type of thing do you know what i mean yeah um doesn't matter what like what stone is on it no it can be no, like any no no do you ever remember and i i I don't know whether or not you would have ever actually been involved in this. Women always were involved in this. this and we used to put the, the ring, the ring of the, the, the needle, needle. Yeah. you know, above the baby belly. You know, is, oh, it, is it a boy or a girl? Boy, yeah. That type of thing. Yeah. And that one could very much be affected by the fact that grandma's doing it. You know, grandma really yeah. wants a girl, so grandma's going. So grandma's swinging it. <laughs> the girl, it's a girl. Right? Her right? Her hard. <laughs> so yeah, that was the, that's the basic premise behind something like this with okay. a pendulum. Um, you can have several of them. It depends on what it is that you're comfortable with. Hmm. You can make your own pendulum. Honestly, you really can. Okay. You know, this it just has to be something that's weighted. Right? It's something weighted. Yeah. Really, it's nothing. You can take a ring off and use a pendulum in that way. That's so cool. Another um, thing that you can do with candles. I'm a really big fan of using candles for this kind of thing because spirit loves to play with flames. Okay. They love flames. Um, so if you get a candle, it does have a flame on it, not you, because your animals are crazy. Use at your own right. risk. Use at your own risk. Do not be... <laughs> Don't leave the room. We are not liable for any arsons or anything like that but if you get a really good candle i'm not going to mention any stores but don't cheap out get a good candle okay that's got a really good wick on it a really nice burn to it put it right in front of you on a table right and you're looking for like probably consistent flame like you not like a flame. yeah, yeah we don't we need it nice and straight subtle flame. that's why nice. i say spend a little bit of money right. on a good one and you're sitting there and you ask the candle flame to show you which way is yes, which way is no. Okay. And it's either going to start to bend to the left or it's going to start to bend to the right. Okay. You can also use it to communicate with anybody that's in your home. Okay. By saying to them, if there is someone that's present in the home with me, make my candle flame dance. And you will see it start to go completely crazy. Oh. The mouth. This is crazy. That's cool. Sorry. <laughs> that's great. I'm that's not right. thinking any of that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm going to start throwing ectoplasm here in a minute. That would really be bad. Hey, hey our viewership great. is going to skyrocket. How is that? <laughs> What's that this would from? really put the ratings up. Somebody blows their nose and you want to keep it? <laughs> What's that from? Oh my God, what's that from? Uh, Ghostbusters. Yes. Okay. It's got to be Ghost Ghostbusters. <laughs> Right? All right. Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah. So if I wanted to participate in something like this, I can get a coat hanger, I can get a pendulum, I can get a candle. A candle flame. Yeah. And those are ways yeah. that I can tap into Absolutely. the energy around me. Yeah. That's really or cool. Absolutely. I can reach out to Tanya for a reading. Oh, you could do that. Or you can reach out yeah, to you could do that too. Oh, well, we'll put uh, your information again on our socials. Yeah. On your, on your uh, socials? On our socials. On your socials? Yeah. You know, our social media. We'll share sure. you. <laughs> We'll be shared. Yeah, but uh, Tony, we would we just really want to thank you. We uh, thank you. we're so fun. looking forward to spending this time with you again and yes. learning a little bit and sharing some stories. So uh, I had a really great time. Thank so you so much I. for coming great. and joining us. Yeah. I think you. I'm gonna wear this like oh my gosh. probably at least till Christmas. <laughs> this is bedtime wear. This, this is, is uh, formal wear. You're like ready I'm gonna do to go. my makeup like this from now on. It is a little Moira Rose meets uh, a little Delia Deets Delia from Deets. Uh, Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah. It's a I've got the croning yeah, you're and Dale right here the whole time. It's great. Yeah. And over here you got gay. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I <wanted> to... <laughs> so uh, I thank you again so much for coming and joining us thank today. Everyone say hi to Rob. We Rob... didn't get him on camera today, but hi, Rob. Thank well, you. Rob chose thank not to wear Rob. a costume today. <laughs> No, he's dressed as Tech Wizard Rob. That's, That's true. <laughs> no, unless he's on camera. He's in full cat outfit over there. He's doing... <laughs> No, he has to go on camera. It's a leopard, like a whole leotard. <laughs> Rob is in a leotard right now. Oh, God. So. All right, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for coming out and joining us. Thanks for coming out for coffee. With Mike and Lori. We'll see you soon, guys. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> have questions comments or ideas for a future show reach out to mike and Lori on their social media twitter instagram and facebook or email us at mike and Lori socials at gmail.com